Everyone is safe, thankfully, but firefighters are still at work here. We're waiting for the fire marshal to come and see what exactly caused this blaze. One of the issues that happens when we have big storms like this is what happens to our turtle nest. And I'm going to show you some of this damage. You can see the roof came out up here. I'm going to clearly have to keep going back to the museum and keep practicing <laughs> that obstacle course. I wasn't the best, but I think I can get it eventually. During the summertime, it's pretty much a waiting game out here next to Lake Okeechobee for those blooms to pop up. When you would imagine most people were asleep in their beds and the collapse happened on the other side of this condo building. You see signs like this all over the place. You can also see the gate is locked up. This happens way too often. You get a package on your porch and it's gone before you even get to open it. And if you're like me, you have something to protect yourself. I have cameras over here. When you get to the store, you grab your purse, you're looking for your shopping cart, but you may not have to worry about forgetting one of these anymore. Much well, like the fuel in the rocket. Much Basically like the fuel the in the rocket. <laughs> it is a Friday morning. All that really remains is one police car that stayed overnight to protect the crime scene. I'm under the Jensen Beach Causeway where winds over 70 miles per hour are blowing through last night. And they blew this sailboat into the bridge under here. You can see the damage to the boat as it slammed into this bridge, which is made of concrete. And then it came up and hit the railing, took out the railing over here. This is just some of the damage across the bridge in Stewart. One family had a hundred foot tree fall over in their yard. It was a ficus. They have lived there for decades. It had never fallen before and they're shocked by how just in a few minutes it came down. He yelled, oh my God, Pat, the, the tree's down. I go, what tree? He goes, the ficus. I go, no, the ficus couldn't be down. It was heartbreaking. It was scary. Um, I was shaking. This isn't the only boat that got beat up here in Jensen Beach. Another one washed up onto a boat ramp. Both of these are definitely going to need towing to get out of the water. For now in Jensen Beach, Madeline Montgomery, CBS 12 News. It's not about more, it's about better. It's not about quantity, it's about quality. In 2006, Charles Burkett became the mayor of Surfside, a small town of only 5,000 people. But now, people from all over the world recognize his face and his name. A couple of weeks ago, nobody knew where Surfside is. Now the world knows where Surfside is. The collapse of Champlain Tower South on an early Thursday morning in June not only put Surfside's name in headlines, but it meant the small town government would be in the middle of a global tragedy. Well, we're a small police agency. We have 31 sworn officers. They work 24 hours a day, seven days a week, nonstop, and they're still working. Burkett has been mayor on and off for over a decade, and while he never expected this spotlight on Surfside, he always knew his town would come together if they ever needed to. The entire community has stepped up and just basically kind of exhibited what we knew was there. Love, compassion, caring, dedication, resilience. As for the future of Surfside, Mayor Burkett anticipates a closer community, trying to bring comfort to those affected by the collapse. It's been the best of times and the worst of times, and everybody has stepped up to do their part. We knew that it was in them, but now we know it's in them because they've proven it, and they've proven it to the world. I'm live here at Tamarind and 25th Street, and right now it's obviously dark, but if you ever drive by here, you usually only see a patch of green. Well, this is actually the final resting place of hundreds of lives that were lost during the Great Hurricane of 1928. It's the biggest disaster you've probably never heard of. To think that a hurricane killed as many as 3,000 people just in the United States, almost all of them in Florida, and most Americans never have heard of it, is remarkable. The hurricane of 1928 swept over Florida, going through Fort Pierce, Palm Beach, all the way out to Lake Okeechobee. All the rain from the Category 4 storm flooded Lake Okeechobee, destroying its small dirt dike, resulting in towns like Belle Glade and Pahokee being completely washed away. We never will know the death toll. A reason these haunting images of the aftermath don't pop up in history books? The Great Depression overshadowed the storm in newspapers, and many of the people killed were black migrant workers from the Caribbean, a group that was discriminated against during that time. While the hurricane isn't talked about much, it still impacts the way of life here in South Florida. If you want to know about the impact of the 1928 hurricane, just drive around out to the lake. 
That gigantic dike is there because of the 1928 hurricane. Instead of letting nature run its course, Floridians decided they wanted to keep farming around Lake O, an industry that still rules the area today. The Hoover Dike was put up around the lake to protect farmland and prevent more flooding. If the dike was not there, all the sugar fields, the 700,000 acres of sugar fields, would not have been built because they would have flooded all the time. And to keep the dike from breaking again, like in 1928, we have discharges from Lake Okeechobee instead of letting it naturally flow south. And of course, those discharges are the center of an environmental argument since the lake gets algae blooms, and those are then released into waterways throughout South Florida. Another impact from the hurricane mass graves like this one in West Palm Beach and Port Mayaka, a reminder of the tragedy Mother Nature can bring. Live in West Palm Beach, I'm Madeline Montgomery, CBS 12 News. I've been going to museums every week, and this was definitely a different experience. I got down and dirty to learn more about the Navy SEALs and what all they do. Take a look. A spot where history was made and continues to be shared. It all started right here in Fort Pierce on North Hutchison Island. The Navy SEALs and their treacherous training all started in Fort Pierce. This is part of Florida history. These guys were here in Fort Pierce back in the 40s. Uh, doing training for World War II, the greatest generation. Great man isn't only interested in the SEALs history, he's a part of it. The veteran commander served for 34 years. When I joined the Navy, I did not know about the SEALs. But soon man himself was going through vigorous vetting to be a SEAL. They uh, really assess and screen and then select these uh, young guys that want to be SEALs, and they, they pick the best guys that they think are going to be the most successful. SEALs go through a tradition that started on North Hutchinson Island. They did what they called Hell Week here to get them physically ready, and we still do that now in uh, our SEAL training out in Coronado. If you visit the museum, you can try your hand at the training. I made an attempt at the infamous obstacle course. <laughs> This is how you do it, I'm sure. I may need more practice before passing this test. <laughs> SEALs are responsible for missions you've seen in movies, like Saving Private Ryan. They did all their training here to get ready in preparation for Normandy. Black Hawk Down, and the museum even has the lifeboat that saved Captain Phillips. And it's not the fame that Commander Man is proud of. My favorite part of being a part of this museum is I can continue to serve my country. So it's really neat. Like it didn't end when I retired. So now I'm down here and I can keep the memory and the legacy alive of the guys that went before me and the guys that are still going. I'm gonna clearly have to keep going back to the museum and keep practicing <laughs> that obstacle course. I wasn't the best, but I think I can get it eventually. But the museum is open every day but Mondays from 10 to four if you wanna go and try your hand at it.